you very much uh, to be here. Welcome to this after lunch session. I know it's always a little bit difficult for, for you and for us also. So my name is Vincent Branger. You can pronounce it uh, Vincent Branger if you prefer. And Pierre Jean is with me, or Pierre Jean, but it <laughs> looks weird, uh, honestly. Um, so I'm working for Infralis. Infralis is a, a consulting company in France, based in France, based in Paris. We are only four consultants. I'm the owner of the company. Uh, and uh, I work since uh, four years uh, on a regular basis for BNP uh, Paribas. And uh, Pierre uh, will be uh, with me to present uh, this project. Um, first of all, some yes. words uh, regarding BNP. Hi, so. Um, Hello. Yes, my name is Pierre. I'm working uh, as a virtualization architect in BNP Paribas. BNP Paribas is one of the main bank in Europe. We are present in more than 80 countries and we are close to 200,000 people. We have three main activities, is the retail banking, investment solution and corporate and investment banking. Okay, no thanks. <laughs> It's good enough. <laughs> okay, now we can talk about the project. Uh, so first of all, uh, I will present uh, the aim of the project, uh, why we did uh, this project uh, uh, at BNPP. And uh, then uh, I will talk about the, the way to build what we call a private uh, desktop as a service service offering. So it will be not technical in this part. Uh, and then Pierre will talk about the architecture uh, itself. Uh, then we will talk about the uh, admin delegation because it was really the aim of the project uh, uh, and that's why we use after that uh, the first version of Excalibur with the support of, uh, of Citrix uh, in France. Uh, so BNP was uh, one of the early beta uh, tester, uh, so official one, uh, as I said, with the support of, um, of Citrix. And we will talk about uh, our Excalibur experience and uh, uh, how it uh, meets our, our requirements. And then we will talk about the next step of the project because it's really an in-progress project uh, now and uh, we can say that it's really not finished and we cannot consider exactly as a private desk yet. Um, so the, the project organization uh, is based on two uh, different uh, companies inside uh, the BNP. Uh, that is the infrastructure and production service. Uh, it's like a SI for the other part of uh, BNP, the subsidiaries and so on. And uh, we work also with BB2I. BB2I is a special thing, to be honest, because it's a joint venture between BNPP and IBM. And they provide the uh, operations uh, things of the uh, computers, production, and so on. So I, I would like really to thank uh, Pascal Kwameaka because he, he works uh, with us and he cannot be here with us uh, today. But uh, he really did a great job uh, regarding Excalibur particularly. So first of all, uh, the needs. What were the needs for uh, this project? So, a lot of needs have been expressed in this uh, HVD uh, project. So we prefer to uh, use the HVD acronym for Hosted Virtual Desktop than VDI. Um, I don't like the VDI uh, acronym because a lot of people doesn't know exactly what it is and they make a lot of confusion uh, with VDI. So I prefer to use HVD for Hosted Virtual Desktop and uh, SBC or shared desktop when I talk about Zenap, for example. So it's really Zen desktop Zenap in, in our case. Uh, first need was the business continuity. Uh, the idea is what happens if a part, uh, uh, a building, for example, uh, burns or something like that, and where the people can work uh, from home or from other location. And BNP has in, uh, in Paris and the suburbs, uh, 2,000 seats uh, where anybody can come and then have a PC with their own applications in order to work. Okay. <coughs> and uh, the SLA are very uh, high because uh, the new PC must be available in four hours. 
Uh, another uh, thing is for developers. Uh, BNP has developers all around the world, and uh, for security reasons, uh, HVD can be a very interesting solution uh, in order to manage these security uh, aspects. Also, uh, a new project uh, began uh, a few months ago uh, for mobility for non-corporate end devices because uh, for the moment it's only possible to connect to the BNP uh, network using a BNP corporate laptop and it will change and HVD is also an interesting solution to uh, provide this uh, solution. Uh, it's also uh, possible to use uh, the HVD solution for XenApp Evolution. It's for uh, only the users who are using a published desktop because they want to keep XenApp for the uh, application publication, publication uh, published application, sorry, uh, and not for desktop uh, publishing. So uh, no comment about that, but uh, that's their choice. And uh, another, another thing is the access between different networks. For example, uh, the Belgium part uh, of um, BNP, Fortis, uh, is working uh, and made the administration of the email servers. And they need to connect uh, through different networks and it can be very difficult to manage um, for the firewall and so on. So it's easier to give and to provide a desktop in order to go on this desktop and then they are inside the network as an corporate network. So that's where the main reason. As you can see, there is no TCO reason, no money. Uh, the goal is really security and all of this stuff. And so I, I won't say that we have an unlimited budget, of course, but we don't do VDI or HVD uh, for um, financial reason, I will say. What we need ex uh, also is to have different level of management and self-management. For example, we want, wanted really a granular administration delegation in order to provide for some subsidiaries or some users some capabilities. Uh, for example, to generate a VM, to assign a VM to a user, uh, to make snapshot and so on. So th that's why I say provisioning, self-provisioning, snapshot ability for developers, and as I told you, the disaster recovery uh, capability. So that's why we made what we call internally a private DAS. I will talk about cloud computing just after to explain why we use this terminology uh, internally. So the project began in uh, December 2011. So first things was really to build a service offering based on a cloud. The idea was really to use this cloud terminology for political reason, honestly, but also for a management reason internally. So, some definition first. What is a, call, a cloud exactly? So, we use uh, here the NIST uh, definition. It's the most common use, uh, uh, actually. And we can say that we have five uh, characteristics. So the on-demand self-service, the broad network access versus pooling, so mutualization, uh, rapid elasticity, so rapid is important, and uh, measure service, so in order to so metering and uh, uh, billing, uh, chargeback, and so on. So the goal of the project <coughs> is really to reach the five characteristic for our project. And we will see that it's really not so easy. Three service models, the very famous, well-known uh, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. As you may know, desktop as a service is more in the infrastructure as a service part because we uh, really want to generate VM, but for the desktop, for the users. And for deployment models, what we call a private cloud, community cloud, public cloud, and hybrid cloud, so private cloud is owned by a company and managed either by the company or a third part uh, uh, company, uh, that's the case here. Community cloud is special because it's for many uh, companies uh, with the same goals, like uh, in aeronautics, for example, or for public, uh, it's sometimes also the, the case. Public cloud is a, f a famous cloud with uh, internet and uh, like Amazon and so on. And hybrid, hybrid cloud 
is the combination between private and uh, public. If you, even in a case of cloud bursting, or if you want to use some application in the public cloud and some application in the private cloud for any reasons. So this slide, I, I like this one because the question is always what is the difference between a very well-managed virtualization infrastructure and a private cloud? And so the, the, the um, boundaries are not so easy uh, to find. So th this um, slide comes from the Gartner. I think it, it has been done by Alessandro Pirelli from the Gartner. He's working, uh, you know, virtualization.info. And uh, in the light blue, you can see the classical uh, virtual infrastructure with the physical one, the virtual, virtual server, and the management of the virtual infrastructure. And here you can see the service management and the IEM. And in dark blue, you can see the new components to build a private cloud. You can see, for example, the life cycle management, configuration, and so on. And uh, of course, the self-service provisioning that was important for us. And here you can see the orchestration. And here, for me, a very important part to, in order to make a, a, a hybrid a cloud, it's an external cloud connector. So in our case, we don't want to build all the uh, pieces uh, of this uh, cake, I would say. What we, what we want is really the self-service provisioning, the service catalog, because it's very important. The chargeback will be very, very simple because the price of a VM will be only per year, uh, according to the type of the VM. We will talk about that uh, a little bit later. <coughs> Capacity management was a very important point, and very difficult to achieve, and we will talk al also uh, uh, about that later. Performance, performance management was OK. Configuration and change management was simpl simple, was easy in our project, because the idea was to use the same uh, uh, change management than for physical desktop. So nothing changed for, for us uh, in this uh, configuration. And the same applies for life cycle uh, management. So, as I told you, the name private cloud can be sometimes uh, difficult to understand because uh, other people can say, you know, it's virtualization.10 to virtualization 3.0. Okay? But it's mainly <coughs> virtualization, of course. So, building a cloud. Uh, or manage a cloud is very structuring in the company. We saw that really in our project because it changed really the relationship between the IT and the business. Because the IT becomes really like a provider of a service and sometimes a broker for the business because a, a broker because he also uh, can have a, a, a service into the public cloud. Okay. And also, it affects the job of the IT. I will talk about that later. It's very important. And it affects uh, also how IT is consumed in the company. So to achieve that, we really need a strong and supportive and executive support. And that's why we prefer to use cloud and private cloud, because it was six year, I will say. I don't know if I can say that for a computer. But uh, internally, it was really better to use cloud than virtual desktop infrastructure. That looks perhaps stupid to you, but it's really important. And it's not so uh, crazy, I will say. So building a cloud is really not just a technical project, because you really have to uh, involve all the people and especially the BP2I, you know, the production team, because it changes completely the way they are working now. So, I will present some of the steps uh, necessary to build uh, this kind of clothes, cloud. So, the first question I always have with my customer when they call me and say, okay, please, Vincent, come, I, want, I would like a cloud. Okay, you know, I would like a cloud. And, uh, my first question is, OK, what is your current service catalog? Because I need this information in order to build the cloud to provide these services. And it's very interesting because most of the companies 
answer to me, we don't have any services catalog. Okay, so the first step of the project is really to help the company to build this service catalog uh, in order, in a second step, to have the technical project of building a cloud. And we have to ask questions like, what SLA do you want, service level agreement? Which cost, because you have to pay for this service? Which compliance, that was very important for, for a bank, of course. And what is the strategic, strategic plans of, uh, of the company? And for each service you can find, you can define, you have to decide what the cloud can do for you, is if, if it is relevant or not, and if it is useful now or perhaps in the future, because of a maturity problem, for example. And of course, in order to decide if it's interesting or not, you can uh, use a classical return on investment model. Okay, that's very important uh, to define all uh, that in order to know if it's interesting or not to go to a cloud. The best way uh, is uh, to define a business case. Uh, you know, perhaps this uh, idiom, I think it's uh, smart small, uh, start small, think big, you know? And for cloud, I think it's very uh, relevant because you can really uh, start very, very small and then decide to go, uh, to go further. And build a business case is a good idea because you can find a way where the cloud is really relevant for your company and that can be the first step to go to the cloud. So, the, um, the idea is, is to work with the customer. When I say customer for BNP, I, I, I remind, um, I remind um, the part of BNP is really acting as a provider. So, a subsidiary, a service and so on, a direction, is really considered as a customer, okay? So, we work with the customer uh, in order to define a business case, and we can evaluate the cost in terms of economic, training, and so on, and the benefits. And sometimes the benefits are not so easy to, de to define, because, for example, we know that one of part of the clause is automation, but in which way to automate some uh, deployments uh, to make some provisioning faster, in which way it can be interesting in terms of economics, it's not so easy to define. Okay, So that's all what you have to do in order to know if you can go to the cloud or not. Another point is to develop an IT management plan because the idea of the cloud is a better automation of numerous operation tasks like self-service provisioning and so on. And the question is, what will become the usual sysadmin? It's really a, a question, okay? I, I don't know exactly, but I think for Google servers, there is one administrator for uh, 3,000 uh, servers, something like that. So it's impossible to achieve uh, in, a, in a company as BNPP, okay? So it's really important to, to work with the guys uh, in order to define and to uh, uh, develop new skills like cloud service architect, uh, the famous DevOps, uh, service cloud manager, and so on, and develop also new uh, perspectives for the current job. Uh, for example, uh, for capacity planning, because capacity planning is essential for a cloud in order to analyze and know exactly what we have to do uh, uh, after. Oops, excuse me. So, in order to build a cloud, uh, the Gartner defines five different layers. Two are named uh, virtual and physical layers. So, uh, the first one, the resource tier, is the uh, infrastructure, uh, with, of course, the physical, virtual uh, resources, and so on. And the second one, the resource management uh, tier. In our project, um, Pierre will talk about the, the product uh, later, but what we can say, it's easy here to define that we will use Dell servers with Xen servers as hypervisor and NetApp for the storage. No problem for this uh, layer. For the other one, we will use Xen Desktop Studio and Xen Center. Okay? 
So that's easy here to find the product uh, corresponding matching with the layers defined uh, by the Gartner. It's much more complicated for the next three ones. The next three ones are the CMP, Cloud Management Platform, with service optimization, man service management tier, tier, and access management tier. You can see, for example, here the self-service bar, here the service catalog, and here the orchestration, for example, or the identity federation. And here the question is, what, what is the product we can use here for a typical Citrix-based uh, uh, virtual desktop solution? What we have is almost only Xen Desktop Director. And Xen Desktop Director, we cannot do a lot of things with it. And if you look at all these points, it's almost impossible to meet these requirements. Okay? So we can see already that we have a, an issue, a potential issue, if you want to build a cloud with the classical Xen desktop uh, components. So let's begin now the technical project, I would say. So, at the beginning, we have to define the service level regarding the compute, so uh, CPU and memory, the storage and the network. And then we can provision the corresponding uh, infrastructure in terms of server, storage, network. That's what we, uh, we did. And we build an infrastructure for an estimated uh, 5,000 uh, virtual desktops. Okay? Depending we will see that uh, just uh, in a few slides, depending on the choice of the VM for the different customer. So we configure different offers, like mini, normal, high, we will see that, and then the capacity planning. So here is now the official BNP presentation for uh, this uh, service offer. As you can see here, there is, a, is that's the catalog, the service catalog of BNPP with the desktop uh, core service. There is a lot of uh, others, of course. And we can see here the support, so level one, level two, application services in order to provide the application to the desktop. And then you can see here the physical desktop delivery and the virtual desktop delivery. So this one is really the new uh, part of, uh, of the catalog, uh, service catalog. And you can see here the infrastructure and security and common desktop engineering around uh, like template and so on. So here, if we go inside the virtual desktop delivery, we define the service metrics in order to uh, calculate the SLA and to see if the SLA was uh, uh, respected or not, the way to uh, deliver a hosted virtual desktop, the way in order to provide the service continuity, and the service security, of course, and the service operation uh, provided uh, for BP2I, uh, the joint venture. So here are the instances we uh, decided to propose to uh, the customer. So there is two, standard and premium, based on NEOS. NEOS is a project name of the desktop in uh, BNPP, the new one, uh, based on a Windows 7 image. And uh, uh, image is an old one based on an XP uh, image. So as you can see, it's uh, provided in 32 and 64-bit. Uh, so as you know, 64-bit uh, for virtual desktop is just a way to use more memory. But uh, OK, so we are here in the psychological part of the project. You know, If you don't provide any 64-bit uh, uh, desktop, it's not good. So we have to. So vCPU is one or two. So we do some CPU of our commit, okay? Not so much uh, comparing to uh, uh, other uh, project because, uh, for example, for the standard, it's only three VM per core. And we have another CPU of our commit uh, in case of DRP, okay? If we are using just one site, if one site is done. Pierre will uh, present uh, the, the architecture. In terms of uh, RAM, we have 2 to 4 gigabyte and 4 to 8 gigabyte. This size is always the same, 50 gig, so it's a one-to-one. -one, huh? And uh, we are using snapshots, so every day, and uh, with uh, um, so five snapshots during five days, I don't know the, the name uh, in English. 
So that's uh, what we uh, provide uh, as a uh, virtual machine. In terms of activities and SLA, so as you can see here, we write all the activities provided by the service, like uh, VM or group uh, of VM creation and user or group assignment, uh, removal, uh, restoration in, in case of snapshot, template management, etc., etc. And uh, here, who provide that? The time in terms uh, of uh, what you do and the SLA here uh, and the RTO and RPO. As you can see, we don't achieve what we wanted because here it's not self a service because the IT has to do it. Okay? So that's really the proof that with the common use of Xen Desktop, we cannot do really a real cloud. Okay? And the question is, what we provide, is it a cloud or not? And if we look at the four, five essential characteristics, so run network access, okay, we have it, no, not so difficult. Resource pooling, yes. Muse your service, yes, it's easy. It's not what we wanted in terms of capacity management, but on-demand self-service and rapid elasticity, we don't have we don't provide that uh, now. So in this V1, we don't provide a cloud with the common and usual um, uh, products uh, we have. So what is the next step? The next step was the administration delegation. That was the most important part with the VM management, with the VM and user assignment, and the snapshot management. And that's the way uh, in order to answer to the on-demand self-service. And so we also want to provide new templates for the business, uh, a better capacity planning uh, management, uh, multi-domain because here uh, all the users, even in different subsidiaries, are uh, authenticated uh, through just one uh, Active Directory to one domain. And what we want to provide also is a one to many uh, hosted virtual desktop solution in order to have some uh, elasticity and a better uh, provisioning, uh, I would say. So that's why, and Pierre will explain that later, that's why we worked uh, with uh, Excalibur because it provides a better way uh, to delegate uh, the right uh, for uh, the administrators. So that was the functional part, uh, I would say, of the, of the presentation. Now, Pierre will present really the technical part and uh, the way uh, we uh, provided the uh, architecture and after that the uh, way to use and the first experimentation with uh, Excalibur. Okay, thanks, Vincent. I will start with the oh, first version of the architecture. I will explain the different components of the architecture. So from the right to the left, we have the storage. It was the NetApp NAS from NetApp. Um, regarding the hypervisor layer, it was Xen Server 602. Regarding the connection broker, it's Xen Desktop 5.5. And the client access device, it depends on existing. It could be signed client or fat client. Why we choose Xen Server 602? It was because it, was, it is the lowest cost model. So the licenses are included in the Xen desktop. So no need to buy anything else. And it's a single vendor solution. We, we consider as uh, suitable to have only one manufacturer to to deal with. And uh, the third reason, it was the simplest implementation. For the desktop, Xen server fit all the needs. Regarding Xen desktop, it was really easy because Citrix is the main actor of the desktop virtualization, thanks to ECI protocol and a lot of features, user features that allow to provide a good uh, virtualization service. 
And Xen Desktop is also agnostic of the virtualization layer, contrary to some other vendors. And the third reason, oops, excuse me. Uh, in BNP, we have a lot of SBC solutions based on Xenapp, maybe 40,000 sessions. So we expect for a convergence between who VDI solution and uh, the SBC solution. And Citrix confirmed our expectation with the last version of Xen Desktop, which name is Excalibur. Okay, regarding the storage, it was based on the BNP storage team recommendation. We required a NAS technology with high performance, and the solution was NetApp with flash cache and asynchronous deduplication. Sun technology was not relevant because of the, the price and the performance, because there's a, an offer in BNP about Sun technology, but the performance is not so good and the price was not compatible with the business model. Um, to notice, when we started the project, we considered the Helio technology from Atlantis. We expected huge, huge benefit to implement Helio, such as low-cost storage and also no IOPS threat. It could be very interesting. Unfortunately for us, Helio was not compatible when we started the project with Zen Server, so we had to stop the study. But Maybe in the next version we will try to consider it again because of the expected benefit. Okay, for the client, as I said, it depends on the existing client. There's same clients such as HP or Chip PC. Chip PC was considered as the best price ratio quality. And we implemented also a software sand client. It was a Stratodesk technology. You have a USB key with a small Linux OS and the Citrix client. So the main advantage, you just have to boot on the key and you have only your Citrix client. There's no fingerprint of the, on the FAT client. So the main advantage for the, for example, the BCP, Business Continuity Plan, you can share a single uh, FAT desktop between several businesses. And there's another have a benefit to use uh, Stratodesk. It was the FAT client is covered by the software assurance. So you don't have to pay for the VDI license when you use the software send client. It could be another advantage. What's more? Um, we were wondering when we started the project if we will be able to to support all the desktop load, how to avoid all the bottleneck, and how to be able to deliver uh, efficient services. So we changed a few parameters in the Xen server com configuration, such as the DOM0. By default, there were only 700 um, megabytes dedicated for the DOM0. So we increased it until 2 gigabytes. And we used uh, login VSI to test some uh, one of the main risks in the desktop virtualization is the bootstorm. And we, it was good to test because when we start to reboot all the desktop, all the de Zen server crashed. We tested again and the Zen desktop crashed again. And thanks to Citrix, we had to change another parameter in the Xen server, which was the RSC protocol. It's a received side copy. Normally, this protocol allows to free up CPU to the DOM0. So normally, it becomes more robust. Unfortunately, in our case, it was the contrary. So we don't know why, but the solution fixed our problem. Um, no more about <coughs> the high-level architecture. OK. One of the key points is also the application provisioning. Because to help the HVD adoption and minimize the change on the desktop infrastructure, we decided to consider the virtual desktop as physical desktop for the management, especially for the patch management and the application management. And normally, we have three 
delivery model, such as SBC application, AppV application, and locally installed application. Um, in fact, most of applications in BNP are locally installed. And moreover, it's user-based. So at the first time your user connect to his, to his desktop, it could take two hours for the application installation. So it was one, one of the main key points of the architecture. And there is an impact on the desktop provisioning. Because normally we have different options, stateful, VC, stateless, and one to one, this is one too many. But we had to select uh, stateful and one to one. Why stateful? Because of the application provisioning. We need long life cycle desktop. It was not possible to deliver a new desktop each time the user connects. And why one to one? It's because, as uh, said Vincent, we, the Microsoft support is mandatory in the bank environment of, in BNPP. So, you know, uh, Microsoft didn't change their, uh, didn't change, excuse me, <laughs> hmm? policy, thanks a lot. And so there is only one way to deliver um, image with Microsoft is using the sysprep tools. So as we wanted to have the benefit of the virtualization, as the quick provisioning, the only way was to use sysprep. So exit M MCS, exit PVS. So we had to develop a lot of script to create the template and to integrate the template into the Xen server architecture and to deploy and to integrate also in Xen desktop architecture. So it was a only one way, but it cost a lot of time to do it. OK, this is the global technical diagram. The name HVD Group, in fact, is the name of the corporate BNP solution. Uh, what's the, the key point? We have redundancy, and we dealt with high availability and DRP. Um, the architecture is deployed on two sites as and it could host until 5,000 de virtual desktop. Um, we deal with the DRP normally in degraded mode. If the, one of the sites crash, we can host all the VM on the second site. Of course, not with the same performance, but it's possible. And uh, as I mentioned, we use stateful desktop. So we, are, we had to replicate all the desktop until <coughs> both, um, across the both sites. So all the VHD file corresponding to the desktop are replicated in each site. And uh, the features to do it is a snap mirror from NetApp. OK. Regarding the high availability architecture, it's based on the current Citrix features and also on the redundancy of all services. All Xen servers are in resource pool. There's several DDC on each site, several web interface on each site, and also a mirrored database has its mandatory in Xen desktop, contrary to, to Xen app. So, in case of Xen server crash with the Asha built-in mechanism, okay, we have all the VM can, can be bring online on another Xen server. It's very the standard mode. Okay, for the disaster recovery plan, it was more complicated because of the desktop provisioning. So uh, the need was uh, RTO less than four hours on RPO was 12 hours. So it was not possible to provide new desktop in case of seed crash. So the desktop are all replicated and Pascal in our team develop a lot of scripts to export also the metadata with the VHD file. So when the seed crash, we have automized the script and it's possible to bring online the VM without 
data loss in the second site. Um, we didn't use the Citrix uh, features. I don't remember the name. It was uh, the DRP for yeah, Xen Server. Seat recovery. It was not possible for two reasons. The first, it was not supported with NFS storage. It was the first reason. And the second reason, you need to have Platinum Edition to use it. So it was not compatible with the uh, business model. Even if the cost was not the first uh, reason to, to consider virtualization desktop. OK, in detail, we have the NetApp architecture. The whole component are also redundant. And we use the mirroring, snap mirror, between the two sites. And we used also vServer to create the storage. So the main advantage of the vServer is that it can be hosted on any controller. OK, just a look at the storage network. The important thing is um, we have a dedicated storage for the Xen server, so we can ensure enough uh, network bandwidth. Excuse me. Yeah. For the storage. And okay, to sum up with the network, it just to resume, all Xen server are connected to three networks, the production VLAN to you allow user to connect the VM, the management VLAN for the administration and the resource pool uh, uh, request, and of course the storage LAN. Okay, as Vincent mentioned, one of the main need was also to allow delegation. So it's not possible really to, to delegate the administration, but thanks to the Citrix desktop uh, director, it's possible to delegate only the help desk administration. So it was really easy to deploy. It's only a web console. We can monitor the session, allow diagnostic on the session, but also on the, on the different component of the infrastructure. So it allows the help desk to, to do diagnostic. And one of the main interests, uh, the desktop director, was desktop group based. So it allowed to, to give the help desk delegation to a specific uh, business on a specific desktop group. So we can have different business on the same Zen desktop site. OK, so the first point is OK. We provide a full virtual desktop infrastructure with a high availability. And we meet most of the customer requirement, especially with the SLA. Unfortunately, we have a lack of delegation of the administration. So we can, in fact, we can delegate the administration, but uh, the, it means that we have to dedicate an entire infrastructure. So we have to dedicate DDC, we have to dedicate resource pool. So finally, the, the cost is very expensive if the business really wants the administration. So our model is not complete. OK, so we decided to test Excalibur, the new version of Xen Desktop. And one of the main aspects we considered was the delegation. And the delegation is there's a lot of new features. Remember on Xen Desktop 5.5, 5, 5, we have only a few built-in roles. And the role scope was really limited. And uh, we realized that there was another amazing thing with Xen Desktop 5.5. It's um, any local administrator of the DDC is automatically a Xen Desktop administrator. So in a large environment, which many administration team, it's very difficult because finally we can't delegate any administrator could become Citrix administrator. So finally, there's no interest to use the administration console. And there's no login, so finally, it's completely crazy. So with Excalibur, we can delegate the administration. You can define the role. The scope are very, very granular. 
And also, there is a logging database, probably, because they include the XenApp solution. So it's very interesting. You can start to delegate the administration of the solution. OK, in depth, we can see for the new role, you decided which permission on which component and exactly what you want to do, such as create a group, edit, or you have a lot of menu. This is the first version of Excalibur. And they, they had some change in the new version on the preview too. They had several menus, such as AppV, and the direct source is now include. So the console starts to get a lot of components. And we can see the three console, and we see that they had several components, such as the profile management. What can we can see on two, on two, two way, the two console, excuse me. And the preview two, they had also the receiver storefront, and they had also the AV provision, public, publishing. Uh, our study was only on the Xen desktop, so finally we didn't consider the Xen app because it's, it was not the, the goal of our study. Okay, so it's but just to some screenshot about the new, the new menu for the profile management, for the receivers from front, so it's uh, for the preview too, and the configuration logging, but configuration logging is not so new. And we have the director. The director includes the um, formerly edge site features. So now you can. Normally, you can see a lot of information from each site on the Citrix Zen, uh, excuse me, desktop director console. Unfortunately, even if they change the name of each site, you already you continue to need a platinum license. So it's the reason we don't have on our console. <laughs> and uh, okay, there's few change also in the provisioning menu. We can see in preview one and the preview two. And the main uh, change is they had, um, you can now provision the Windows, the Windows server as you provision a desktop, uh, a desktop, of course. So you can see on the right, oh, oh no, no, you can't see. <laughs> so you can. You can add the server, but you can also add the, the remote PC. And normally, it will be possible to provision the Windows Server exactly as a desktop. So maybe it will be possible to to have a server a computer, server desktop, as if you don't want to. Maybe it's more for the cloud provider, because if you provision a server as a desktop, you don't have to to pay for the SPLA license. OK, so to conclude, dear professor. So some um, conclusions. So uh, Excalibur offers really new opportunities to delegate the Zen desktop administration. So it was really, as I said, uh, the main uh, goal of the project. And we achieved that, and it, it, work, uh, it works fine. Uh, we have um, uh, 500, uh, yes, 500 uh, users with Excalibur right now. We cannot have more because of uh, stability issue, honestly. But so it's a preview one. We got the preview two, but we have uh, so we have other issues with the preview two. So the preview two is private; it's not the the, the public one. Uh, so. For, for the moment, we, we just have 500 users. We have uh, 4,000 uh, users uh, with the first architecture uh, Pierre uh, showed you. Uh, so uh, associated with the provisioning mechanism in Zen Desktop, we will also uh, achieve the uh, self-provisioning. So it's uh, perfect. It, it, it can, um, 
it can we can achieve uh, the, the, this goal, but we still have an issue uh, for uh, delegate uh, the the user snapshot. So we will uh, test also uh, Merlin. So we should have uh, Merlin in August normally, and we will try uh, to uh, to use it. Uh, you know, perhaps Merlin. Merlin will be the um, um, option f with uh, cloud platform with cloud stack in order to provide virtual desktop based on Xen desktop. Okay, and it will thus possible to delegate some Xen server uh, mechanism as a snapshot, for example, because that's the main issue uh, uh, regarding uh, our uh, project. Um, so just a few words perhaps to conclude uh, about uh, Excalibur. So Excalibur is really based on the, the, the Xen desktop architecture. I mean, it's a Xen desktop N plus one uh, with some Xenap features. We, we lose a lot of Xenap uh, feature. For example, I, I know that we will lose uh, application virtualization, so application streaming uh, or isolation. Um, we have uh, some issues also with the pre-launch uh, mechanism, uh, etc., etc. And uh, they want to provide, uh, in a parallel way, uh, Excalibur with Xenap feature and uh, Xenapsis.5 with the feature uh, FP1, FP2, FP3, until they reach the same uh, feature uh, level between both, okay? And then they will stop to support uh, Xenap uh, 6.5. Uh, so it will be a hard time, I think, for us because we, we, we will have to manage two uh, different versions. Um, so any question? Developers. Developers. Developers, yes. What's your real, real world IOPS issue? Uh, I don't. What's your real world IOPS issue? Oh, <laughs> good questions. So, um, do, do you have the, the. The question is the number of IOPS in a real uh, world. Um. Because the, the problem is always the average between uh, and the peaks. So uh, I, honestly, I don't have uh, the, the number. But for the moment, we don't have any issues with that, because uh, as you uh, as you saw, we have two architecture, and every are able to uh, so every site is able to have the whole seat. So we are working with uh, uh, divided by two, I would say, architecture. Okay, that's the first point. Second point, we are, uh, all the users are all around the world. So we don't have uh, all the users uh, uh, simultaneously, concurrently. Okay, so we don't have uh, issues. We just began to have uh, issues with that. And that's why we want to, uh, to use uh, Elio in the next uh, version. It will be mandatory. And because when you talk about, with, when we talk with NetApp, they said, 25 and I obsess. That's so stupid. So. I'd like to see you. Yes, it is Atlantis. Yes, it is Atlantis. Sorry? Try for some revives if you need. Atlantis. Atlantis, Yeah. Yeah, yes, of course. Yes, but we, we didn't use it because, because of the Zen server support when we tried. Yes, yes, but that's all better now. <laughs> but now I know it will be possible. We are waiting for that. You said you could only use SysPress, but you showed the options of uh, automation with uh, Excalibur. So yes, because, because uh, uh, since a few months, it's possible uh, to uh, delegate uh, the support of the uh, Windows provisioning with Citrix. And if there is any issue with the SID, then Citrix guarantee to uh, make the support with uh, Microsoft. That's completely new, and it could be enough for uh, the bank. It's not sure now, but it could be enough. The, the choice of NFS is a bit uh, the first choice, or the choice is some, you test SAN or? No, no, NFS is much better for virtual desktop environment. 
for performances, for simplicity, for thin provisioning, native thin provisioning. So it's really the best uh, way to deal with the storage. Uh, for the um, uh, for Excalibur, yes. So, sorry. Uh, it was a uh, one dot two, I think, or a new version. Really, I don't know. Uh, I don't really sorry. know. Sorry. I, I know we so we we got the the um, public. Uh, first, okay, the public uh, release of technical preview, I mean, of Excalibur. And then we got some uh, hot fixes from Citrix France. Uh, and we, we didn't know exactly uh, what, what they are. And uh, perhaps it's uh, an improvement. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.